Amen. Our text this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 8. Even as Jesus spoke, many people put their faith in him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say they shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. These are the words of our text, God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be multiplied to you now and forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our text from the Gospel of John in chapter 8 begins by telling us that many people put their faith in Jesus. They listened to Jesus and they believed in him. And our epistle today from Romans chapter 10 tells us that faith comes by hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. And so as Jesus spoke, his powerful word changes their hearts and they come to saving faith in Jesus. They call on the name of Jesus and they are saved. They put their faith in him. So it is rather mind-blowing, isn't it, when people do not believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. They listen to his teaching, but his teaching doesn't take root in their heart. They see his miracles, but they are not moved to believe in him as Lord and Savior. They see his mercy, but it has absolutely no effect upon them. Instead, Jesus is met with cold indifference. More than that, he is met with vigorous rejection. The scene for our text in John chapter 8 is the temple in the city of Jerusalem. And a crowd has gathered around Jesus to listen to him. And while they are listening to Jesus and while he is teaching, the Pharisees literally drag a woman to Jesus. They have caught her in the act of adultery, and they make her stand in front of the crowd and in front of Jesus. And they say to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say? They were using this question, John tells us, as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing Jesus. So what will Jesus do? It is not difficult, is it, to see the sin in this woman's life. She stands before the crowd, and she is most certainly guilty. She doesn't declare her innocence. She doesn't blame someone else. She doesn't even cry out for mercy. She just stands there. She has chosen in her life sin over righteousness. She chose forbidden intimacy with a man who was not her husband. And there is absolutely no defense for what she has done. And the wages of her sin is death. And as she stands there at any moment, her life will end. The first stone will be cast, and when the last stone hits the ground, she will be dead. Now, let's face it. This woman means absolutely nothing to the Pharisees. She is for them just a means to an end. They are really after Jesus. And this woman is a way that they are trying to discredit the Lord. And so the Pharisees condemn her before the crowd and before Jesus. And they see her sin of adultery so clearly. But these same men who accuse her 
do not see their own sinfulness. You know, that's the way it is, isn't it, with a self-righteous person or a group of people who see themselves as self-righteous. They see the speck of sin in the woman's eye, but they fail to miss the log of sin in their own lives. If you don't see the sin that is in your life, you have no need for a Savior. Have you ever thought about that? If you don't see the sin in your life, you, you have no need for a Savior. You, you don't need Jesus if you don't believe that you are a sinner. And if your sins do not accuse you and strike terror into your heart, then the words of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus is just met with cold indifference. You can listen to Jesus and his word takes no root in your heart. These men do not see their sin. These Pharisees have no need for Jesus. They have no need for faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so Jesus takes this opportunity to teach them about their sin. And so after the woman is dragged to Jesus and she is condemned before Jesus by the Pharisees, we read this in the Gospel of John. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. Now that's curious, isn't it? What in the world is Jesus up to? Now, we have no idea what Jesus was writing on the ground. None of the Gospels, none of the rest of the scriptures tell us. But what is he doing? Well, one commentator I read said that he thought that what Jesus is doing is writing in the ground all of the sins of the men who are standing there accusing the woman of adultery. Maybe. Maybe that's what Jesus is doing. More likely, I think what Jesus is doing is he's just ignoring the Pharisees. He's completely ignoring them, and he's ignoring the woman who is standing there. It's as if Jesus is deaf to their accusation. He sees no need to enter into the trap that they are setting for him. And so instead of biting into a Snickers bar, buying a little time, he's just writing on the ground, ignoring them. Because John tells us, when they kept on questioning him, catch that? They kept on questioning Jesus. He finally straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again he stooped down on the ground and wrote. Jesus ignores them. He doesn't even answer them. But they keep on bugging him, baiting him, tempting him. And the longer he ignores them, the more they question him, vigorously and vehemently. They are so sure of their own righteousness. They are so convinced of the woman's sin. And they are so confident in their plan to trap Jesus and discredit him. Finally, Jesus says something to them, if any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to cast a stone. They came to Jesus accusing the woman of her sin. And now what does Jesus do to them? He makes them face their own sin. If you are without sin, cast the first stone. They can't. Who are they to accuse this woman? Who are they to prosecute her? And then Jesus goes back to ignoring them. He goes back to writing on the ground, and our text tells us, at this, those who heard him began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I. 
condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. You see, there is only one person there who can cast a stone. And that person is Jesus. He is without sin. More than that, Jesus is God. He is the judge of all creation, the judge of all people. Jesus is her judge. And Jesus does not condemn her. You see, Jesus' kingdom is a kingdom of mercy. And Jesus forgives her sin. He does not treat her as her sin deserves. And here we see the heart of Jesus. He has not come into the world to condemn sinners, but to save a world of lost sinners. And Jesus takes absolutely no pleasure in the death of a sinner. And he wants everyone to repent and believe in him and be saved. And he desires the salvation of this woman. And Jesus desires your salvation too. The Bible says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus does not condemn you because of your sin. His kingdom is still a kingdom of mercy and forgiveness for you. As Jesus spoke these words of forgiveness to the woman, our text tells us, even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. They believe that Jesus is the merciful Savior of sinners. And then Jesus says to them, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In other words, if you believe in Jesus and trust in his mercy and his forgiveness, you are his disciple. Then you know the truth of God's love, and his mercy sets you free from all of your sins. But some who had believed in Jesus, who hear these words of Jesus, begin to argue with Jesus. These are the ones who had believed in him. And when Jesus says the truth will set you free, his words set them off and they begin to argue with Jesus. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Now, they knew they had been slaves in Egypt for almost 500 years. They knew that they were slaves to Rome at that very moment. What they do not believe is that they are slaves to sin. But Jesus tells them that they are. And he points out to them their spiritual bondage, their bondage to sin. He says, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. The woman caught in adultery was a slave to sin. And so are they. But they do not and will not believe they are sinners. They saw the sin in the woman, like the Pharisees, but they don't see their own sin, like the Pharisees. And isn't that true still today? People don't see their sin. Just listen. Listen to how people make excuses for all of the things that they do. They have all sorts of explanations for what caused them to do what they did that hurt someone else. They don't see themselves as accountable to God for their sin. They are not worried about the day of judgment that is coming. And they think that they will get by and that they, they will enter into eternal life because they are good, because of their merit, and they trust in their own righteousness. They have no need for a savior. They have no appreciation for their lost condition, for their sin, and no fear of God's condemnation and the flames of hell. The words, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, should sober them up, but they are drunk with self-righteousness. If you don't take your sin seriously, you will not take your salvation seriously either. If you do not believe that you are a sinner, you have no need for a Savior. 
And you have no need for Jesus, who is the friend of sinners. This is the reason we see empty churches. This is the reason we see such shallow Christianity all around us. People do not see their lost condition. They don't see that they need to be set free from their sin because they do not believe that they are great sinners. So with such opposition to Jesus, with such strong unbelief, truly it is a miracle, isn't it, that anyone believes in Jesus? And yet there were people who believed in Jesus back then, and there are people who believe in Jesus today. We believe in Jesus. By God's grace, we believe in Jesus. We confess, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. This faith that dwells in you and me, it is a gift of God. It comes to us from God by God's word. Faith comes through hearing and hearing by the message of Christ. And the word of God has granted to you and me saving faith in Jesus. The word of God has led us to see the depth of our sin, our transgressions, and what our transgressions deserve, the judgment of God. And the word has led us to see that upon the cross, Jesus died for us, and he is our Savior. And the scripture says this, anyone, anyone who trusts in Jesus will never be put to shame. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hold to that teaching, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. One day, Jesus opened the ears of a deaf man. I read it this morning from Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 7. Remember, he takes his fingers and puts his fingers in the man's ears and says, Epitha, be opened. And all of a sudden, the deaf man's ears were opened and his tongue was released and he could hear and he could speak immediately. Well, in a much greater way, Jesus has opened your ears so that you can hear the message of the good news of Jesus and believe in him as your Lord and Savior. Jesus redeemed you with his shed blood on Calvary's cross. His tomb is empty and you will rise to life everlasting on the last day. Sin cannot accuse you. The devil cannot condemn you. The grave has no claim on you. Like the woman caught in adultery, we are all caught in sin. And Jesus has come into this world in order to set her free and to set you free as well. Remember, he asked her, woman, where are your accusers? And she looks around like, nowhere. They were silent. They were gone. Where are your accusers? They are gone. Jesus tells you, I do not condemn you. I set you free. And you are free indeed. And so that day the woman did not die. She lived. She went home forgiven. And so do you. You leave God's house this morning forgiven. You will rise from the dead. You will live with Jesus, the Savior of sinners. Jesus sends our text this way. He says, Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but the son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You are free. You are free from the slavery of sin. And you have a permanent place in God's family, a place in Jesus' kingdom of mercy, and you belong to it forever. You are free from a self-righteousness that judges your neighbor's sins and justifies your own sins. You do not have to point out the sins of others and ignore your own sins. Instead, we confess our sins to Jesus and he forgives us. And so like the people at the beginning of our text, you put your faith in him and you are free indeed. 
thanks be to God that in his mercy he has called you and me to saving faith in Jesus. You have a place in God's family forever. And Jesus says to you, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Come soon. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord to life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to stand for the prayer of the church.